Let's go out to the NYC and talk to Brian. Hey, Brian, what's up, man? Hi, Dr. John. Uh, thanks for taking my call. You got it, my brother. Thanks for calling in. What's up? Um, yeah, uh, the reason why I'm calling is um, I'm not sure how to help my wife with her hoarding situation. Um, Ooh, that one's tough. Um, I... At first, it was uh, uh, I, I didn't actually notice it at the be- at the very beginning. Um, I just thought that she just had more stuff. But over the years, uh, we've been married for about ten years now, and um, I'm noticing that it's getting worse and worse, just little by little. And now it's kind of at a point where um, I'm seeing um, things that are hazardous, um, like, um, used tissues, um, used diapers, um, uh, there's bugs, um, starting to show up and it's just kind of, um, getting to a point where I feel like I I need to get her some help. Um, but the big issue is, um, she's, she's in denial and we've had fights about about this many, many times over the years that I, you know, I told her that she has a hoarding problem. And whenever she hears that word, she gets really, really angry and upset. And she tells me that she's not a hoarder. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes I feel terrible that I, you know, been yelling at her. Um, I, I even told her that I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave um, if she doesn't, uh, you know, get rid of all this stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, I, I guess my question is, you know, how do I help her if she's in denial? Um, because, you know, some of the, some of the research that I've done is, um, if you're living with a hoarder, you should just, just leave. But, it's hard for me to uh, just leave her because we have a we have a baby together. Ooh man, um, she's she's only like uh, eight months old now, and so um, it's it's been really difficult for me. So that's why <laughs> I need to get some help. <laughs> yeah, if you've got a kid in a home and there's bugs and rats and dirty diapers everywhere and it's unsanitary, then at some point, very very soon you're going to have to make a call for the safety of your child. Yeah. Um, and you have to get the kid out of there. And even if you end up and, and, and follow my trail here. Okay. This is not what I'm telling you to do, but I'm saying, even if you end up ending this marriage and leaving and your kid is out 50% of the time, that's 50% in a healthy environment versus this. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'll also say your kid is not a healthy in, in a healthy environment if mom is sick and dad is screaming at her. That's unhealthy too. Yeah. It's also unhealthy if mom is not well and dad is yelling threats at mom and berating mom and a uh, right to so the whole thing is not well. What has happened over the last, well, you say you've been together 10 years. What's happened over the last 10 years that has slowly cranked that anxiety pressure? Because uh, uh, hoarding is an OCD derivative, right? Which I, I think is, uh, it's OCD anxiety derivative. It's tomato, tomato. But it, it's a body's way of trying to keep itself safe. Yeah. I mean, we don't have any financial issues. That's the thing. Um Whoa, 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 who you cares? Know, she, that's, that's, that's one little piece of the pie. Yeah. Are you safe? I think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> is her work safe? Yeah, my, my job is safe. Um, no, 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 is, is her work, your wife's work? Oh, so she stopped working after we, uh, after she became pregnant. Um, she was a massage therapist. Um, and then uh, she, she, she's just been busy with the baby. And, you know, we, we have some money saved, too. So it's, you know, we, we don't have to worry about finances. So she, she can actually just stay home and 
Um, she can, maybe. but are you watching this over the last year and a half? Are you watching her um, health deteriorate? Uh, yeah, it's the, the thing is, like, she's um, she's telling me that she's working on it. She's working on it. But what does that and mean? And then she starts, she does start it. Like, she's working on getting rid of things. She needs um, pro- she needs professional help. She doesn't need to throw things away yet. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you start leaving, there's a difference difference between collections that get out of control, and there's difference between mom passes away and we move all of mom's furniture into one of our bedrooms, right? And all and, and into our living room, and like there's there's that an escalation, if you will. It goes from moderate to severe to extreme. An escalation of this to where it pushes it to severe for me into uh, extreme is when you start having dirty diapers, you start having bugs, vermin, when you start not being able to go into certain rooms or walk down certain hallways because it's just full of stuff, right? That's when we've crossed over where just cleaning it up is, it's a bandaid. It's just, it's going to manifest somewhere else. Yeah. That's what I'm noticing because I've, I've taken care of the bugs. I've taken care of like I've cleaned the entire house by myself when she's not home. No, I know you times, have. I know you have. But it just comes right back and even bigger. So look, the, so, the so think of, think of this. Um, if you listen to the show for any time, you've heard me talk about a professor I had about a decade ago that challenged me. Stop asking people why do you keep drinking. Start mm-hmm. asking people. What is it about your day or your life that your body has figured out that alcohol is the best way you can get through it? Because the alcohol isn't the issue. Here, hoarding, collecting things, not throwing things away, and not being able to either A, see it, B, experiencing it, right? The bugs, the whatever, and to not be able to hear from somebody that she's been married to for a decade, right? That inability says that her body is in full survival mode, which means there's not a lot of learning that can happen in full survival mode. The only thing you can do in survival mode is just get the crap out of wherever you are or hunker down and defend yourself, which is what surrounding yourself with junk is at a very primal level. And so the conversation here is not like, hey, you got to work on this and start throwing diapers away that are, that are soiled. It is, hey, we got to go see somebody. She's... She's in, she just tells me that she's not a hoarder. Okay. When there's all this stuff. But listen, like, brother, listen, the house. you're not choosing to live in reality then. Similar to the way she's not. She's looking at you in the eye after a decade and saying, I don't care what you say. I'm not changing the way I live and I'm not interested in getting the help that I need. Um, and you're banging your head against the wall. Yeah. And so at some point you have to say, I can't continue to live like this. Or even further, I will not continue to live like this. And I don't want our baby having bugs on him. I don't want my baby growing up surrounded by dirty diapers and trash and used Kleenexes and rats. Yeah. Right? And that's a scary, hard thing, but it's equally hard and scary as her saying, I don't want to go get help because nothing's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You've both found yourself at this impasse. I'm not suggesting that you end your marriage, but I am suggesting that you get yourself into a safe position because here's what's also happening. You're losing your character over this. You resent her now. You're grossed out by her. You yell at her. You treat her like a, like a dog, like a, like a unruly neighborhood kid. Because she's somebody that's that's brought this to your life. Fair? Yeah, I think that's that's very accurate. Because I, I remember I used to be a very clean person. I had minimal things around the house. And then she came into my life and just things started to pile up. Accumulate, um, yeah. Yeah. And... And um, she doesn't deserve you to resent her. But that means you have to do the hard work of putting the boundary up and pulling yourself out of a situation. Okay. And so maybe the conversation looks something like, hey, I love you so much. 
I want our marriage to make it. And I want this baby to grow up with two healthy parents. In this environment, surrounded by those dirty diapers over there, by those bugs over here, by X, Y, and Z, I'm no longer able to be the man that I want to be. So I'm going to have to exit this home for a season. It could be 30 days. It could be 60 days. We'll reconvene. Here's the name to three counselors. I'll go with you to all of them, to any of them. We've got money. We'll pay for them. But you choosing to not go get well is a choice for me to not be here. And I accept that. And also, we're going to have to figure out what to do with the kid. And that might end up in court. That might end up, who, who knows the path, but this kid deserves a safe home. Yeah, that's one of the main reasons I'm, I'm calling today, too, is because I'm worried about our child. Yeah. Is there a, a do you all live in an apartment in New York or you live in a home? Oh, we have a house. Um, so I've been moving to bigger and bigger houses over the years just because I thought it was just the space that we needed. But no. the bigger space we get. <laughs> no, <laughs> it fills right up, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man. Talk about that. <laughs> You just described America right there, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, is there a space that you can designate inside this home as off limits? Yeah, I, I've, I've been meaning to do that, but I haven't really figured out how to, I, I guess I just, just tell her that like she can just keep her space here or. Um, no, I, but I, I'm, I'm looking for a transition. I'm looking mm-hmm. for a before you just throw the car into park while you're flying down the highway, right? That's that's you moving out. Is there another step in between, which is these two rooms can have nothing in them. Mm-hmm. One of these rooms is where our baby will sleep and I'm responsible for cleaning it. And if you choose to pile up trash and use diapers and Kleenexes and throw up rags and leave them in this room, you are choosing for me and this baby to leave this home. I'm not going to hassle you about the rest of the house right now. But I need two sanctuary rooms, a place where I sleep and a place where the baby sleeps or a place where me and the baby sleep together. Maybe she'll say, absolutely not. You don't get that. Forget you. This is my house too. No, I don't don't think she'll do that because she does really care for, like she's really good with our baby. Um, It's just, she just has this mental block where, she she doesn't have a mental block, brother. Listen, she's not well. She's hurt. Yeah. She's sick. Okay. She's sick. Yeah, she told me that, um, you know, when, growing up, she grew up poor, and so she didn't ha- get to have the things that she wanted. So now she says she gets to have things she wants. So she's just, you know. But she's lost control of it. Things. She's lost control yeah, of it. I right? think so. She lost control of it. And so... um Childhood trauma, childhood experiences, um, poverty, all of those things are little nuggets along the way to somebody who grows up as an adult and is struggling. But it sounds counterintuitive, but pointing out where the mess is and yelling about the mess and being angry about the mess, further, um, it keeps banging those alarms that are going off inside of her that the stuff is using, it, she's using the stuff to drown those alarms out. Okay. What she needs is connection. What she needs is somebody to sit down and listen. What she needs is to process. What she needs is some tools. And she can only get that at this point from a professional therapist. And so I tell you that to tell you not to make you, not to make you feel powerless, but to give you peace. You can't fix this. There's not a conversation you haven't said, um, or there's not a way you haven't said a thing in the right order that she'd go, oh, okay, okay, now, now I see it. it you can't can't smell it for god's sakes i've been in a house with dirty diapers in one of those little trash cans that has like the i don't know like the smell good stuff on it and i still want to set my nose on fire just to stop the the pain right so it this this it's it's not a thing you've done wrong the part i'll challenge you on where you got to make some changes is you're continuing to go back to the same situation and you're continuing to get madder and madder and madder about it. And you're losing yourself in that process. And as you lose yourself, you're blaming her. And what I want you to do is to look in the mirror and say, okay, I can't control her. I can't fix this. What can I control here? I can take myself out of this situation. 
Hopefully, it's a wake-up call. It's not a divorce. I don't want that for you. But I'm going to take myself out of the situation, and I'm certainly going to take my baby out of an unsafe situation, an unsanitary, unsafe, unwell situation. Is any of this easy, Brian? No. Is all of this going to be gut-wrenching and hard? Absolutely. And it's right. And continuing to live in this mess is also really hard. So choose the hard path that's going to lead you to or could potentially lead you to peace. Don't just keep banging your head against the wall. Because then you both find yourself on the same couch surrounded by stuff, mad that the other person won't do the next hard right thing. You got to go first on this one, brother. Thank you so much for the call. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life. It's kind of a blueprint here. This is not the book to hand her right now. She's not there yet. It might be someday, but she's not there yet. Right now, she needs to go sit with somebody. And hopefully, she'll follow your lead and go with you.